the other way. The Warriors are the champions of history in the making. Lady Red Devils of Georgia Public Broadcasting presents the 2009 Georgia High School Association's State Basketball Championships. Funding for this program is provided in part by Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, the Georgia Student Finance Commission, Regions Bank, the Georgia Lottery, by viewers like you, and the Georgia High School Association who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge Dealers, State Farm, and Naturally Fresh for their support of GHSA athletic activities. Live from the arena at Gwinnett Center, it's the 2009 GHSA State Basketball Championships. Today it's the 4A girls title matchup between the Southwest DeKalb Lady Panthers at 28-4 out of Region 6, taking on the Fayette County Lady Tigers, a perfect 31-0 out of Region 7. And a good afternoon, everyone. Dave Garner alongside Dick Williams, my broadcast partner. And, Dick, here we are again looking forward to an excellent basketball game and a rematch of last year's a state game championship. We, we did just last year. Southwest DeKalb, of course, last year's state champions. You saw them celebrating in the open, but they were decimated by graduation. Guess what? They're back. They're back. Let's go ahead and talk about the Southwest DeKalb Lady Panthers. They've got a lot of great athletes on their side, and it begins with Kayla Lewis. Kayla Lewis is the leading scorer at 16 points a game. Uh, she really is the foundation of the team because there are so many young players, and she's a good, strong inside player. She can play the wing, and she steadies the group. Absolutely. Of course, the starting five today for the Lady Panthers, as you see it, Kawana Rivers, Alondra Rivers, Yester's sisters, Kayla Lewis, LaQuisha Lewis, not related, and Jarnisha Blake, the senior, again, 5'10 inside. Meanwhile, flip side, of course, taking a look at the Fayette County uh, Lady Tigers, what a job they've done. Number one team, undefeated, 31-0 into the state championship. Uh, Coach John Strickland, clearly a candidate for Naismith Coach of the Year. They're led by Tessa Holt. Uh, who is probably the speediest player I've seen in Georgia in a long time. She doesn't score a lot, but she has an uncanny ability to hit Anma Onyuku. Uh, watch today as Onyuku breaks and Tessa Holt hits her with a no-look pass, and it's an easy layup. There's your starting five. Holt again, Dakota Walton, Chastity Welch, Sasha Sims, and Anma Anuku. That's right, the 5'10 junior, very consistent throughout the playoffs and looking forward to a great game here today. Right now, let's go ahead and get, go courtside to our PA announcer, Dr. David Witherow of Chatsworth, Georgia, with today's introductions. Dakota Walton. At guard, a 5'6", senior number 21, Tessa Holt. At post, a 6-foot junior number 24, Sasha Sims. At post, a 5'10", junior number 40, Anma Onuku. And at forward, a 5'7", senior number 45, Chastity Welch. The head coach of Fayette County is John Strickland. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Set for tip-off of the 4A Girls Championship. Let's go downstairs. Lisa Weiss standing by. Lisa, what's going on? Dave, this rematch promises to be a good one, and it's really not about revenge. Yes, Southwest DeKalb did beat Fayette County last year, and 
Of course, Fayette County would like to return the favor and win their school its first team title since 1964 when the baseball team won it all. But the Lady Tigers are just thrilled to be back in the big game, and they want to finish the journey they started here a year ago today, and they really don't care who they play. And Dave, of course, the Lady Panthers are just as thrilled, and they would like nothing more than to repeat as state champions. All right, thank you, Lisa. We'll be talking to you throughout the afternoon. Again, Lisa Weiss, the third member of our broadcast team here today. I'm Dave Garner alongside Dick Williams and the rest of the GPB crew as we welcome you to Championship Weekend right here on GPB. And, man, I tell you what, Dick, I can't believe it's already that time of year again. Here we are sitting here at the arena at Gwinnett Center getting set for some state championship ball. I know. This is, this is our good weekend. This is the best. We get the arena at Gwinnett Center. We had to make into the center flex, and it's all basketball all the time. Wall-to-wall -wall action. First up, again, the 4A girls title matchup between number one Fayette County and Southwest DeKalb. The Lady Tigers control the opening tip. And Southwest DeKalb in the road blue. Fayette County in the home white this afternoon. As you see, Tessa Holt, number 21, the 5'6 senior with the basketball there momentarily. Good look baseline. Knocked away. And the Lady Panthers back and running the other way. Great up and under move, a little short though by Kayla Lewis. And already inside the first 30 seconds, the two players, Dick, we focused on in the pregame show, touch the basketball. Well, I've got to have a little talk with Tessa Holt. She's braided her hair tonight. <laughs> and in all the previous games, her hair's been flying all around, and maybe that's why I thought she was so fast. We'll see. <laughs> Coach John Strickland, his fourth season at Fayette County, an impressive record there of 91 and 28. And one. Counted. Great baseline move right there by two other than Tessa Holt. Holt. She's, uh, she's right there. Uh, that kind of surprised me. The other night in the semifinals, she hardly shot at all. She mostly passed. She had a tremendous number of assists. Uh, you know, she averages uh, 7.1 assists per game. Completed the three-point play right there, and it's Fayette County who finds the board first 3-0. Lady Tigers again, Region 5. That shot by Jamisha Blake off the mark. Holt back and running the other way. Trying to squeeze it in between some traffic there. The Lady Panthers do a nice job of closing the door. Uh, based on what I've seen of her, that's a rare uh, overforced pass. She's usually right on the money. Juana Rivers, the 5'3 senior, averages over six points a game. Now here we've got Fayette County in a 2-3 zone. That's to counter that size of Southwest DeKalb. Uh, it's a pretty effective little zone. Southwest DeKalb's got to get inside, but chooses not to. Kawana Rivers with a tray, her first points of the game. Again, last year, Kawana Rivers and sister Alondra Rivers basically rotated in and out with each other. Mm -hmm. This year, of course, they're on the floor at the same time, starting it out. Inside, tough shot, but goes for Sasha Sims. And just when you think that Tessa Holtz is the go-to player, which she certainly is. Sasha Sims is certainly a nice piece out there, the six-foot junior. Well, she averages 10 points a game, and uh, the offense, their, their scoring is spread around four players. That three-point shot off the money by Kayla Lewis. And now Fayette County works on the other end. 5-3, Lady Tiger lead. That three-point shot off the mark would not go. Finally controlled by Alondra Rivers. Lost the handle on it there momentarily. Jump ball call. Possession arrow, Southwest DeKalb. Good hustle by Emma Anyuku of Fayette County, jumping in there to, to tie that ball up. We're talking about Anuku and how consistent she's been throughout the postseason. Has basically been in double figures, as you see our game officials here today. Willie Crosby, Amy Toddy, and Esther Ray. And I know you're familiar with a couple of those folks. I am. Uh, Esther Ray and Amy Toddy are members of my association, Peach State. Uh, Willie Crosby comes from the Gwinnett Group Multi-County Officials Association. Tough inside, would not go. LaQuisha Lewis follows her own shot, still wouldn't go. Battle for the loose ball, still on the floor. And finally, Kayla Lewis comes out of there with it and gets the roll. Good work underneath by the Lady Panthers. And then a turnover. We'll get the call and it's right back to Southwest DeKalb. Tie ball game five apiece. Uh, it looks like the uh, the, the uh, South Kayla Lewis right there. She just sails down the little uh, the middle of the lane and gets a shooter's roll and a bounce on that one. Take the three-point shot. Will Lewis back of the iron. Rivers keeps it alive. Blocked. 
Nice job there by and Jamisha Blake. Holt working on the other and trying to get rid of it. Does so high off the glass. Won't go for Dakota Walt. Ball goes out of bounds, though, and will stay with Fayette County. And that's 45, Chastity Welch, the 5'7 senior, averaging four points a game, who will inbound it. Gets it in quick, off the inbound, too strong, off the glass, wouldn't go. Rivers again, just five foot three, but runs the floor like a general. For that Lady Panther team. There, they're working the ball in. There it is. Oh, turnover. Got a hand on it. I think that's what Southwest Academy is going to have to do. They're going to have to get the ball down near the post and use their size for short shots. Tessa Holt eclipsed the 1,400 career point mark last week. Anuku stands at 997. So we'll have to keep an eye on her here tonight. Holt, of course, uh, already committed to play for the Florida Gators. And uh, I think with her speed, she'll get a lot of playing time. And I think she'll be a nice addition to that program. Absolutely nearly a plus one for Elijah Rivers, but she will go to the line nonetheless. Okay, here's, uh, here's Elijah Rivers, and she's... Uh, the Fayette County player there just uh, Dakota Walton just said, you're not going to score this basket. <laughs> Reached over and grabbed her arm and said, there, that's you got to go to the free throw line now. You see Rivers' numbers on the year, very impressive, and she knocks down the first. Rivers averaging just over 10, 5'6", junior. Second one on the way, and it's there. Two for two for Rivers on that trip. And the Lady Panthers take a lead. We'll take a quick break and be right back with 355 Southwest to Cab leads Fayette County in this 4A girls championship. Now downstairs to Lisa Weiss standing by with a special guest. Lisa. Thanks, Dave. Joining me is Fayette County's principal, Dr. Charles Warren. How exciting is it for the school and the community for the girls to be back here? Lisa, it's terrific. It's great to be a Fayette County Tiger. We're so proud of these ladies back the second time. And uh, it's been a terrific season, undefeated, as you know and you know the strength of the competition. So it's really reflective of our school in a very positive way. As you know, we are a Blue Ribbon School of Excellence and uh, we're primarily focused on academics, but having strong athletic and fine arts programs are so key. So I wanna thank everybody for their support and we're just really proud of them. Thank you so much, Dave, back to you. All right, thank you, Lisa. As we start this second quarter, 7-5 Southwest to Cab with the lead. But, yeah, what a great ride for the Lady Tigers back in this championship game for the second year in a row, making the trip from Fayetteville, Georgia, and out of Region 5. Dave Garner, Dick Williams alongside the rest of our GPB crew. Lisa Weiss, of course, the third member of our team here today. And that's Sasha Sims who opens up the quarter with points for the Lady Tigers. Fayette County High School's had quite a resurgence, not just this ladies' basketball team, but their men's basketball team, the boys' basketball team, right. and their football. They hadn't been around much for a while, but they've really come back in a lot of sports. Great ball movement right there by the Lady Panthers. Worked it down into Laquisha Lewis, the six-foot senior, who picked up two. Back on the other end, that's Sims once again. That shot missing this time. Sasha Sims with four points in this first half scramble. Jump ball call, possession arrow will stay with the Lady Tigers. They trail by two. Hey, Fayette County seems a little bit out of sync from what I've seen them. I saw their previous two games. Their passes aren't as crisp. They seem just a little bit disorganized. Uh, but knowing these players, we're going to see it come back to them a little bit. A day to rest, I guess, for the 4A teams. Not so much for the 5A teams later on. They're playing, of course, last night in the semis. But... These two teams have a day to get their legs back under them. Well, that foul was called. Uh, in previous years, that would have been more of a held ball situation. But there's been a point of emphasis that when a player lands on a player already on the ground, uh, there's a penalty incurred, and you saw exactly that on that play. That's two on Dakota Walt. We're going to look at Coach Kathy Ritchie Walton. Seventh season at Southwest DeKalb, 153 and 50, has also done an excellent job with this Lady Panther program out of Region 6. And I don't want you to think I'm a hairstylist or something, but uh, she always wears her hair down, and I asked her about it, and she said she, the kids had been after her all season to get some braids in there, and so <laughs> she's done it. I barely recognized her. Well, you know, the TV cameras are on. I mean, hey, it's the perfect time to break out a new look. Sure, I mean, exactly. You know? 
Yeah, there it is, Southwest Camp again trying to get it inside, not making a shot, but they got a good open look against that 2-3 zone in the middle. And what a job by Dakota Walt to keep that ball in play. Nice save there along that baseline. Good look, that was Welch. Fed it to the other side, and Anuku with her first two of the night is one point within 1,000 career points, and remember, again, she's just a junior. Watch Anuku, it's fun to watch her. She moves very well off the ball, and she has surprising hops. She can really get up in the air. Waved off. Foul going to be called there. Let's take a look at that last Southwest cab. Last bucket here. Uh, Fayette County off the glass. That was excellent interior passing. That's what you look for. She didn't force the ball up to the basket. She passed it through the lane to the open shooter. Off the inbound right there. Kayla Lewis using that 5-11 frame to her advantage goes up in traffic, makes the catch, and then puts it in for two. And that's a, that's a mismatch there because Lewis is taller than the Fayette County players. And whistle. That one's going to be on Lewis, her first. Two team fouls as you see Coach John Strickland. Ariel Register, the senior, as you see the field goal story, 4 of 13 for Southwest to Cap, 4 of 9 for Fayette County. And a good looking bucket right there by oh, Sasha Sims. Sims. Six points here in this first half, Dick, and Sasha again is off to a good start. It's kind of surprising to me because Sims uh, is one of the three double figure scorers. She averages 10. Uh, maybe she's the decoy tonight. If the defense is looking at uh, Holton and Yuku. Rebound Welch, Tessa Holt, nice move. Springs open, unable to get the shot to go. The follow off the glass won't go. Three opportunities, but unable to hit. That's what I mean about them seeming a little bit out of sync, and Yuku doesn't miss many of those putbacks. She's got great inside position, and uh, she'll normally convert those. Three-point shot on the way, would not go. Laquisha Lewis working and gets the bucket. <laughs> Four points for Lewis here in the first half, and it's 13-11. Southwest DeKalb breaks a tie ball game. Southwest DeKalb able to go inside and score against this smaller team. Tough drive right there. Shot just wouldn't quite go for Tessa Holt. That would have been one for the highlight reel if she would have gotten that one to go. And she's certainly no stranger to national highlight attention there. Of course, one of her plays earlier this season made the ESPN top 10 plays in at number two. It was a half-court buzzer beater in the region tournament against Douglas County. Right. Everybody wants to be on sports center. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the quickest way to get there is uh, winning, uh, hitting a half-court shot to win a big that, ball game. when I should have been getting some sleep last night, Syracuse and Connecticut go to six oh, overtimes. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now, a game, a game like that would uh, play havoc with our broadcast I schedule. think it would. Final seconds ticking down. Holt takes the shot off the mark. Would not go. And an action-packed first quarter here from the arena at Gwinnett Center with Southwest DeKalb leading Fayette County 13-11. Take a break and be right. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Defending 4A State Girl Champion Southwest DeKalb Lady Panthers have a two-point lead over the Fayette County Lady Tigers. You can see the cheerleaders in the house here today from Southwest DeKalb and of course from Fayette County. Firing up the crowd here as folks file into the arena at Gwinnett Center. Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you. At least we support side today along with the rest of the GPB crew. And Dick, that was a very action-packed first quarter. A little bit ragged on both sides. Certainly not shooting particularly efficiently. And uh, while we talked about those cheerleaders, I just kind of wish that the Southwest DeKalb marching band, which is near the legendary, <laughs> I'd love to see them before. Oh, absolutely. Here. Absolutely. Back to action right here, Lady Panthers with the basketball up by two. Fayette County staying in that zone. Nope, yeah, they're still in the zone. But they've changed it up. It's more like a 2 1 2. Three point shot on the way would not go for Khadijah Moten, the 5'6 junior. Checked in the lineup during the timeout. Also number 33, Olivia Gibbs, the 5'9 freshman in the game for the Lady Panthers. There you see Chastity Welch had it taken away. Alondra Rivers on the other end takes it all the way. A little bit short on that one. 
And here go the Lady Tigers back and running. Nice look, open look right there for Ario Register, unable to knock it down. Ball loose on the floor. Lady Tigers up with it. What a terrific play by Anman Yuku. She just kind of stumbled over there out of nowhere and got the ball free. Very athletic play. Oh, Holt had it stripped away by Rivers. Lays it up. Shot would not go. But they will get the foul. This is the second consecutive steal by Alondra Rivers. She's got Fayette County kind of speed. She hasn't been able to convert them, but she has gotten the foul. Foul on register. They're going to look at Alondra Rivers. Two points here today. This is on the first. It's like number 30, Jada Williams. Number 34, rather, Olivia Gibbs. We'll take back in as you see Rivers. Numbers, two points and a rebound for the junior so far. But it's that defense that's helping her. She's got that kind of quickness that uh, can step into those passing lanes, and she did it effectively there twice. One of two on that trip, three-point ball game, 14-11. You know, this was a Southwest Cab team, Dick, that graduated three Division I players last year. As you see, number 40, Anuku, with that bucket right there, 1,001 career points. How about that? And as we said at the outset, that was Tessa Holt having this chemistry with Anuku, setting her up at the top of the, at the foul line there, and she just broke past her defender and scored. Maybe run away, knocked away by Fayette County. Looks like it will stay with the Lady Panthers. And last year's state championship, the first for Southwest to cab, made the semifinals also back in 1990. And nearly a chance for a three-point play there by Lewis, but she'll have to settle for a chance for two. We would call this a big bonus here for the cab County. We only have four teams in the finals. Uh, and uh, Southwest to cab being really kind of the surprise of the group. Well, especially after graduating those players last year. For yes. Stevens, South Carolina, you have Rutledge, Mitchell, both mm -hmm. D1 there as well. So it's hard to replace those kind of players, you know. But basically just two losses to Marist this year, and then the other two out of state against Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Bishop McNamara out of Maryland. McNamara is a traditional power in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, no, this is a good uh, watching what Southwest DeKalb's doing. When you see a freshman come onto the floor for Southwest DeKalb, you know that in four more years, yeah. <laughs> good Lord willing, and we're here, she'll be the dominant player that we feature before the game. Yeah, if you, can, if you can work your way into that lineup with those upperclassmen as a freshman, that's saying a lot. Absolutely. Exactly. And that program, too. Yeah. You know, Kayla, uh, Kayla Lewis with six points here in the first half has done a great job. As you see Coach Richie Walton looking on. I just but, can't get over the braids. <laughs> <laughs> just not used to that. Turnover, Spade County 7, Southwest Academy with just one here in the first half. But despite that, still within three are the Lady Tigers. Well, that's what I meant. Fayette County's passing is just a little out of sync. It's a so slow. And uh, they don't seem to be playing with the precision that they played in earlier games. Shot from outside and over the backboard right there for Taylor Lewis. And kept on going. Because it didn't hit anything, that's why. Anuku on the other end, off the glass, would not go, follows her own shot up and in. All right, now we're starting to see half of the dynamic duo open up here. We'll see what happens when Tessa Holt catches fire. Anuku with six points. Five minutes left here in the first half. Southwest DeKalb averages 67 points a game offensively. And there's three of it right there. Olivia Gibbs with her first bucket, the 5'9 freshman averaging four a game, and she's almost there. A 5'9 freshman yep. underscore that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fayette County averaging around 57 points a game offensively, so about 10 less. But defensively, though, they give up less at 37, really pride themselves on backward pressure, matchups on defense, as you talked about, and really trying to shut teams down defensively. Fayette County has, has beaten Marist uh, handily, in the second round, and yet Maris beat South Coast to Cab twice. Handily. Yes, <laughs> In both handily. games. That's yeah. right. By almost 20, I think, in both games this year, South Coast right. Cab fell by that margin of Maris. And there's two inside. Number 33, China Miley. 
with her first two, the 6-2 junior. And this is certainly a Southwest DeKalb team that has some size there. When you look at players like Miley and Lewis, 6'2", six six respectively. Also a couple of younger players off the bench as well that stand right at 6 foot. And Kathy Ritchie Walton is going deep into her bench. She, uh, she's playing these younger players that she's got to get ready for next year. But... We'll take a quick timeout and be right back. 21-15 in this girls 4A title matchup. Now to Lisa Weiss standing by with another special guest. Lisa. Thanks, Dave. Joining me now is Southwest DeKalb's principal, John Price. And I know it's been an exciting week at school. Oh, yes. Um, our students have been very excited about this game. They've been looking forward to it all day. It's been a very exciting day and week for Southwest DeKalb High School. Well, thank you. Good luck in the second half. I know you guys are off to a good start. Dave, back to you. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa in the principal's office here a couple times in this first quarter. I don't know about that, you know, but uh, <laughs> we'll check back in with her a little bit later on. Meanwhile, Dave Garner, Dick Williams with you. 21-15 in favor of Southwest DeKalb, leading the unbeaten Fayette County Lady Tigers number one right now, trailing by six points. At this moment, Southwest DeKalb's size and strength is dominating Fayette County, and Fayette County's quickness is not being used. They're not... They, they, they seem just a tad out of sync, and they're not shooting very well. They do continue play here in the second quarter with the basketball. Again, that's Chastity Welch, 45. And Ariel register up top. Here's three from Tessa Holt. And that would not go. Holt held the three points so far in this first half. That one knocked away. Number 23, Chancey Dunn checking in for Southwest. The cab got tangled up with one of the Lady Tigers, and it went out of bounds to Fayette County. Now, in this possession, we'll look to see if Southwest DeKalb challenges out higher with the defense. Yes, they are. Uh, they're going to play a man-to-man, -man, and they're going to try to pick them up a little bit higher on the court. Three points, Bill goals, 2 of 5 for Southwest DeKalb, 0 for 3 for Fayette County. And that time, Anman Yuka just got blocked by a bigger player. Shot from outside, would not go. Holt, long pass to Anuku, too tall, though, and back the other way it goes. I wonder if uh, maybe the Wheaties weren't right this morning. Because normally Tessa Holt uh, finds Onyuku with uncanny ability. That one nearly backcourt. May have been touched in there. I think it was tipped, yeah. yeah. So it stayed alive, and Janisha Blake got one to go. Her first points of the game, the 5'10 senior. Averaging 6.4. And that's already seven different Lady Panthers who have recorded their name in the scorebook here in this first half. Well, that's kind of the way their season has gone, uh, really with uh, only uh, uh, Kayla Lewis dominating on every game on the scorebook. Good crowd on hand, making a lot of noise here at the arena. Tessa Holt, good drive inside with the left hand, couldn't get it to go, though. And two, now a whistle. Two taller players. She's trying to slice two taller players and uh, couldn't do it. Number 11, Dakota Walton, the senior will step back in and you see the crowd filling out nicely here at Gwinnett. But well, we hope you're enjoying our live broadcast of the best in Georgia high school basketball and ask you to stay tuned at halftime for your opportunity to become a member of the Georgia Public Broadcasting family. It's viewers like you that help make great local programs like this possible, and thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. You can find out how to become a member at halftime. Stay with us right here. All right, Coach John Strickland is ordered to press. He's decided that being down 23-15 isn't suitable, so he had that possession, he applied full court pressure. Oh, ripped away. Nice, Nicely. nice steal by Dakota Walton. Puts up a tough shot, unable to get the roll. Kept alive, though, nicely by Anuku. Anuku gets up there. She's got great hops. Neither team really lighten it up much here in this first half. Ball loose. Kept alive. Ball still loose. <laughs> and now a whistle looks like that one's going to be on Anuku, I believe, as the two players got tangled up, her and Jamisha Blake. That's two on Anuku. And because we've hit the bonus. Yep. So Southwest DeKalb will be shooting a one and one here. 17 fouls now on the Lady Tigers. This wonderful arena has got great signage and great space. But maybe it's my age. I can't see a number of team fouls. I, 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 they're up there. It's tough. It's it, tough. It's, it's kind of like a driver's test <laughs> to try and find them. Got to cover one eye and look up there. You saw Blake <laughs> knock down that first when you saw her numbers. 
Lipkin, the 5'10 senior with the second one on the way. Misses that one, but keeps her own shot alive right here. Kicks it back out, and now Southwest DeKalb will reset the offense. Looking inside, tough turnaround, wouldn't go for Miley. And that's Sasha Sims running the other way with it. Sims thought about the pull-up, now will take it and hits. And boy, she's got a sweet stroke. Well, she is the bright spot offensively so far for the Fan County Tigers. Eight points for Sims, the six-foot junior. First two of the second quarter, but you're right, Dick. She has indeed been the bright spot there offensively. Wave that one off. Traveling and back the other way, it looks like. And Southwest the cab opening up a seven-point lead here, 24-17, with under a minute and a half to play in this first half. Now, again, they're going to pick up Tessa Holt out high. They're not going to give her the freedom to operate. Fayette County hasn't trailed much this year in any ball game. In fact, they had a 17-point lead. The Simmons against Jonesboro let that slip away from them, but held on for a two-point win. And here, though, they may not have that luxury if they don't pick it up. And there's Sims, though, with two more. She's already in double figures now with 10. That uh, comeback by Jonesboro is absolutely remarkable. The score at the half is 31 to 15, and uh, Jonesboro almost came back to win that thing. It's been a tough road. Southwest DeKalb had a three-point game in round one against Douglas County. It was a seven-point margin against Madison County in round two. Eight-point margin against Northwest Whitfield, then really took Bainbridge out in the semis and exploded 80-48. Meanwhile, Fayette County, their game's a little bit closer the later they went in the uh, bracket, especially that big two-point emotional win on Wednesday night. What's really changed here is how high out the, the Southwest DeKalb defense is coming. Two more for Sasha Sims, and she's got a dozen. She is picking it up for her teammates, Holton and Euclid. Well, Sasha has really been the saving grace here in this first half. And Fayette right. County has now come out of that zone. Right. They're going to play more aggressive defense, and they're going to try and push the ball. 4-0 run here. That one blocked out of bounds, but a whistle on the floor prior to it. Pull to go to the line for two. I guess it's a shooting foul. Take a look at China Miley, the 6'2 junior. Call for one there. That's five team fouls now in Southwest DeKalb. Tessa Holt, again, as we mentioned, held to just three points so far in this first half, but at the line. Uh, she just seems a little out of sorts today. At number 22, Kayla Lewis leads the way for the Lady Panthers with six points in this first half, stepping back into the lineup for Coach Richie Walton. Holt trying to make good on her second and gets the roll. Four points for Tessa Holt, and it's a 24-22 ball game. The Lady Tigers pull back within two. Much more aggressive defense now by Fayette County. They're not sitting back in that zone, they're getting after it. Meanwhile, the Lady Panthers have went cold the final two minutes. And the final seconds will tick off the clock. And we'll enter halftime in a two-point game, 24-22, a good one in this 4A Girls Championship. Let's go downstairs. Lisa Wee standing by with the leading coach. Coach Walton, joining me right now. Your team has a substantial lead. They watch it diminish down to two points. Any changes you're going to make in halftime? Well, we're obviously going to have to pick up Sasha. She's the one that's carrying the team right now. So we got to do a better job of guarding her. Your defense did come out strong. They forced a lot of turnovers early on. Any adjustments there either? No, we're going to stay with our same game plan. Like I said, we kind of lost sight of her. Um, but, you know, we know what we got to do, and we're going to have to do a second half. Well, thank you so much. Good luck in the second half, Coach. All right, thank you, Lisa. Again, Southwest DeKalb with a two-point lead, and Kathy Ritchie Walton will take a break. Again, more coming up from GPB. Learn how to be a member right here on Georgia Public Broadcast. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Twenty-four, twenty-two, or halftime score. Southwest the cab leads Fayette County. Let's go to Lisa Weiss, who's standing by with Coach Strickland. Lisa, Coach Strickland, I know it took your defense a little while to find their tempo. Any adjustments did you make? Well, you know, we, we was getting down and, uh, and they was making a run right there, and I was telling, them, hey, we're, we're we're a good team, we're a great team defensively, and that's what we didn't have the first period right there. So, and then we stepped up toward the end and made some things. So, hopefully, we can come back the second half, keep doing the same thing, and win the state championship. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Dave? 
All right, thank you, Lisa. Take a look back, Dick, at that first half. Very exciting half. Southwest DeKalb, of course, sprinting out to a lead, and they had several players step up. Well, you had Kayla Lewis, of course, who is their leading offensive player, scoring in the paint, and then coming again here. And she is a good scoring threat inside, and then a, a bit of a surprise there is Jamisa Blake fires a longer shot. Sasha Sims has been the offense for Fayette County in this first half. She has taken up the slack left by Anma Anyuka. But Sasha Sims was, uh, was, was scoring well, shooting well, and uh, led them with, with, 17, or with 12 points in the first half. But the, as Coach Strickland said to Lisa, they have got to pick up their defensive tempo, and I don't think that 2-3 zone is going to work for them. They're going to look at the uh, numbers there. Again, 7 of 26 field goals for Southwest to cap, 10 of 26 for Fayette County. Three-point field goals, you see three throws there. Rebound, 17-12 advantage for the Lady Tigers. Turnovers 9-4 again. Fayette County ended the half on a 5-0 run to close that gap a little bit, and that's why it's a two-point game. And the surprise is that Fayette County is out-rebounding Southwest DeKalb. The stats may say that, but it doesn't look like it, does it? No. Because they're much taller uh, Lady Panthers. Well, we talked about the even scoring there in the first half from the Lady Panthers. Kayla Lewis with six. Beyond that, it's pretty well spread out. Meanwhile, Fayette County, it's all been Sasha Sims. Anuka with six points, Tessa Holt with just four, the only three Lady Tigers in the scorebook to this point. As we open up the second half here from the arena at Gwinnett Center. And to quote Bill Raftery, Fayette County is going man to man. <laughs> They've got her Dick Williams with you right here, Lisa Weiss courtside as well, along with the rest of the GPB team. Championship weekend continues right here on GPB. Of course, a great slate of ball games a little bit later on tonight. You've got the 4A boys contest, which will follow between Tucker and Miller Grove, and then, of course, five action later on this evening. Tucker and Miller Grove, two DeKalb County schools that know each other quite well, playing out of the same region. See Alondra Rivers knocking down the first four points today and a rebound for the junior. Second one on the way, two of two on that trip. Rivers with five points, and it's a four-point Southwest DeKalb lead. And I want folks to see the real Tessa Holt before this ball game's over. I'd like to see her really push the tempo and look for Anuku. Inside, Anuku felt the pressure, tried to kick it back out, and a foul from Kayla Lewis. Lewis, the 5'11 junior. Lewis and Miley with an 11-1 run in the first quarter of that semifinal win over Bainbridge really set the tone in that ball game. Lewis finished with 24 points, and Alondra Rivers, who we've talked a lot about here tonight, had 15 in that game, and they've been pretty, pretty consistent through this postseason. Three-point shot on the other end by the Lady Tigers, and it's there for Tessa Holt. Now maybe she'll start to get things going. Uh, I, I think we're going to have a down-to-the-wire ball game here. They seem to have relaxed each side. They seem to have gotten used to this state final atmosphere, and they're playing more efficiently. Blocked inside and ripped away by Holt. Anuku trying to catch up to that ball does so, but can't keep her feet in. Of course, I promoted in the pregame the wonderful magical passing of Tessa Holt to uh, Anuku, <laughs> and twice it's failed. <laughs> We're going to look at Coach Strickland. Not happy about that last sequence there. Tessa Holt, 15 points in last year's title game against Southwest DeKalb. As you mentioned, Dick, a University of Florida commit. We were talking about that uh, buzzer beater she had that made the top 10 ESPN plays. She also had another buzzer beater in round two of this state tournament against Osborne. A three-pointer at the buzzer had 14 points in that game. Anuka with 15, and Fayette County able to edge Osborne 51-48. Oh, beautiful entry pass. And a whistle inside. <laughs> on Anuku, so she'll have to be careful here with 6.15 still left in this third period. And a 30-second timeout on the floor are going to be called by Southwest DeKalb. Okay, semifinals in 2008 for the Lady Tigers and also way back in 86. Fayette County, again, I said that earlier, they've really had a resurgence in sports. They've had a, uh, some down years in football, but have suddenly come back very effectively. And, uh, and obviously both their basketball teams. Last year, of course, we had both their teams here in the final four. And uh, it looks like some, some coaching changes and some renewed energy have uh, made it great. I, I, I think the principal's right. 
this girls team is a team to rally around. Yeah. Because of their speed and their and their uh, obvious enjoyment of the game. Well, it's like Lisa mentioned up top here today. The last state title for Fayette County was back in 1964, I believe, and it was the baseball team. So certainly seeing a resurgence here, and I think you're right. It certainly focuses around this ladies team. And Southwest of Cab is always a power in everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Heard a lot from the Panthers and Lady Panthers in a lot of different sports over the years, that's for sure, against Southwest DeKalb out of Decatur, Georgia. And that shot off the mark. Kept alive, though, by Lewis. Turn around, and it goes. Kayla Lewis with her first points in the second half, and she's got eight. That was a very nice turnaround. That was a nice move. Pulled back on the other end, being guarded by Alondra Rivers. This is the quickness contest, Holton Rivers. Sims had the high hand in the first half, but kicks it back out. Holt, the runner, would not go. Rebound in there by Lewis. And that's the Lady Panthers who have it back the other way. Five and a half to play here in the third. Taken away. Here goes Holt. Oh, big block there by Kayla Lewis who got a mid on it. Spalding the official <laughs> ball of the Georgia High School Association. There you go. Let's take another look at this one. She can't go up against a player that size. Wow. Uh, that was, she just doesn't, there's not enough extension there to make that work. In and out for Anuku. Tough break there. Holt, though, gets it back. Three points, shot short, and out of bounds. I think Tessa Holt is going to have to get her team going through her defense. She's, she's got to get those steals going and get in tandem with Anuku. They are not playing their game, or perhaps the Southwest Decay defense is, uh, is taking them out of their game with their size and their uh, stronger bodies. Alondra with five points, three-point shot. I look like Anuka may have got a finger on that ball, not sure. Back on the other side, oh, follows it up though. Nice job right there by Rivers, point six and seven. 30-25, Lady Panthers back out by five. And a timeout on the floor with 4.39 left in this third quarter. 30-second timeout again, the 4A Girls State Championship game here today. Live at the Arena at Gwinnett Center right here on GPB, a rematch from last year's title game. We'll go ahead and take a break and take a look at some clips from last year's 4A championship between these same two teams. Five seconds on the floor, picked up, and that should do it. The final seconds tick off the clock, and the Southwest DeKalb Lady Panthers are your 2008 4A Girls State Basketball Champions. And the celebration is on. <laughs> All smiles for the Lady Panthers who capture the school's first ever state girls basketball championship. Center will continue on Saturday at the Macon Coliseum, but a good game right here, a five-point game in this rematch from last year's state title game. Southwest DeKalb with a five-point lead. Fayette County trailing, but with the basketball. And Tessa Holt, with seven points in this game, has the ball. Trying to look inside here to Sasha Sims. Back to her good looking cut down the middle of the lane. Just could not get the shot to fall, and that's sort of been the thing here today for the Lady Tigers. The shooting is very inaccurate, and uh, they're having trouble with the size inside. The hands up over them. Uh, and Holt is pressing, I'm afraid. Uh, she, but I, I, she can win it with some really aggressive defense. And let's see if they start to pick them up out higher. They're in a man-to-man. -man, they're out of that zone. See the field nope. goals, two of five there for the Lady Panthers. One of eight for the Lady Tigers. This is they put a little more pressure on with this man-to-man. -man. Welch got a hand on that one. Knocked it out. If, you, if you'd seen Fayette County earlier in the week or the month, you'd be surprised to see this as the same team. And Southwest DeKalb is playing, playing very disciplined, effective basketball. Looking inside right there. Little tall, Lewis able to come down with it and gets it to go. Kayla Lewis now at double figures, the first Lady Panther and with two points. And it's those mismatches, I'm sure, that caused John Strickland to open this game in a 2-3 zone. Yeah. Well, you know, when you look at that semifinal win against Bainbridge for Southwest DeKalb, 80-48.
very impressive. They might be peaking at the right time. You know, you always want to be playing your best basketball at the end of the year, and it appears the Lady Panthers are doing just that. And what's that old line uh, at, the, at the end of the year? You're, you're not a sophomore anymore. You're a junior. That's right. You're ready to go for next year. <laughs> There's Chastity Welch for her first point of the night. 32-26. Get six rebounds for the senior in this game. And knocks down another two for two on that trip for Welch. 32-27. Lady Tigers draw back within five. Looking inside, a great look. Yeah, but great defense, too, there uh, yes. by Sasha Sims. Yeah, LaQuisha Lewis thought she had the open look there, six-foot senior, but was in kind of tight there underneath the rim. And that defense behind her there caught up. Saw coach Kathy Ritchie Walton. Looking on, three-point shot from the corner off the mark. And boy, oh, good hustle by Rivers. by Rivers, absolutely. Alondra on the other end gets the lay-in. Nine points for Alondra Rivers. That was impressive. That was some very fine defense. Quick to the ball. Man-to-man -man defense against Fayette County. Walton looking inside, but a nice job there by Lewis to knock that one away. On the other end. Left hand and it goes for Jamisha Blake. And just when you feel like Fayette County starting to make a little bit of a run in this game, the Lady Panthers answer as they go up nine here in this third quarter. 36-27. Wow, we'll take a timeout, step aside, be right back to the arena at Gwinnett Center. And Southwest DeKalb leading Fayette County in this 4A girls title game. Back here at the Arena Gwinnett Center. Just a reminder for complete coverage of the state GHSA basketball championships and to find out how to support sports programming on GPB, go to gpb.org slash basketball to learn more. Again, GHSA championship info available on the GPB website. Again, that's gpb.org backslash basketball. And we thank you for tuning in this weekend and being a part of championship weekend. It's a great uh, little minor little piece of March Madness. This <laughs> sets the table for the rest of it. If you're a basketball fan, this is the appetizer as we move toward uh, true March Madness. Yeah, Southwest Cab came out with an 8-2 to two run in the last 2.30, opened that lead up to nine points. And, and it is because I think Fayette County is not challenging them enough on defense. Oh, there's a hand right there. By Chancey Dunn. Size again. About a five-inch mismatch. Kayla Lewis with ten points. Stripped away, and Dakota Walton not liking that call. Yeah. Her third. And uh, she will leave. And she will be replaced by Ariel Register. <laughs> yeah, Coach Strickland having a little chat with her right there. Again, three team fouls on Fayette County. Nice. Four. Running, South a, West running a play off the inbound, very nice. So two more. 38-27. First double-figure lead of the afternoon for Southwest to Cab. And that one taken away from Welch. But back and running the other way. Here's Alondra Rivers who pulls it back out. Had the numbers against her, did the smart thing. But here's Chancey Dunn with the open look and the block by Anuku. Are you kidding? Anuku has got the quickest ups you're going to see in a girl that size. Just she rises very quickly. I'm, I'm sure the, the, you'll see her come up. Wow. High. Now that's a wingspan right there. I was looking down thinking Dunn had the open look, and I was just getting ready to mark the well, points Dunn, down there. Dunn, I think Dunn was the most <laughs> surprised person in the building. <laughs> Boy, this crowd here is livening up, taking a look. Watch There's Dunn, right and look at Anuka. Man. She's only 5'6 or so, but she gets up, not just that she gets up, but how quickly she gets up. Kind of reminds me of Herb White when he was playing for Decatur. <laughs> yeah, the elevator from Decatur. <laughs> Speaking of, and there you look at the blocks here today. Lady uh, Tigers with three, Lady Panthers with two. 38-27. Seven still with under a minute and a half to go in this third quarter. Uh, back door successfully yeah. broken up by Sasha Sims. Yeah, Sims did a nice job to get up and get a ball on that one. And on the other end, the lay in there by Anuku. She's got eight. Finally, Anuku. That's the play. That, that That's their basic play. Fast break to Anuku. 
But the Lady Panthers have done so well and shut some of these players down. Anuku with 22 points in round one. She had 23 in that semifinal game against Jonesboro. Has gotten done pretty much every round of the postseason, but so far held to just eight points here. Still a whole other quarter to go, but credit that Southwest DeKalb defense holding opponents to just 44 points a game. Uh, Lisa Weiss tells us that Coach Strickland in that last time out told his girls that to win, they're going to have to fight for the ball. And that, I, I didn't mean to be critical before of them. I certainly wouldn't be, but I didn't feel they were playing aggressively right. enough on the defensive end, and that's what he's looking for. Lewis now with 12 points, as you saw seven boards there as well. Number 30, Jada Williams in for the Lady Panthers. Who now lead it by 11, 40, 29 with a minute left in the third. Yeah. We're going to look at Tessa Holt. And that one knocked away by Lewis. Pulls back behind the arc and rips the three. So that's how Holt answers as she hits double figures. Now here comes the defensive this. pressure. They have got to put this kind of pressure on if they're going to win this ball game. Inside off the glass wouldn't go. Lewis had it knocked away, but two and three opportunities, and that's really been the theme for the Lady Panthers in this game is having those chances underneath. you got to fight for the ball, as Coach Strickland said. And as the statistics showed, Fayette County was leading in rebounding in the first half, but as I said, it didn't look like it to me. Right. And those, two, right. Three, those two putbacks right there are kind of proof of that. Yeah, the Lady Panthers have had their way inside here for the most part. Seven different players to score, as we mentioned. All the scoring for Fayette County still comes from those three players, Holt, Sims, and Anuku. Shot would not go baseline. It's a tough one there for LaQuisha Lewis. Time winding down, 10 seconds. Holt and the Lady Tigers playing for the final bucket. Blocking call going to go against Alondra Rivers. Some of the crowd doesn't like that, but that's one of those calls you just have to make yeah. because it tripped up. She lost her footing. Uh, there may have not have been a big bump, but uh, she she certainly was at the disadvantage. So they put the foul on Southwest DeKalb. Another backdoor cut wouldn't go. Holt reverse too tall. And that shot will not count out of the hand of Tabriana Couch. So the score will remain 40-32, an eight-point lead for Southwest DeKalb as we hit the fourth and final. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Well, there you get a look at the girls 4A state champion since 2000. Of course, there were only four uh, classifications in 2000, but since then, since going to five classes, you see the winners. St. Pius, of course, with three state titles. Etowah sandwiched in there in 2005. And, of course, Southwest DeKalb, the winner last year, trying to make it back-to-back -back championships. And they lead Fayette County 40-32, heading into the fourth and final period. And those great St. Pius teams, of course, anchored by Kelly Kane, who's at Tennessee getting some playing time after missing a year with a knee injury. Uh, those were dominant basketball teams. Fayette County opening up the fourth quarter with the basketball. And, uh, Dick, we do want to mention Anma Anuku playing with four fouls, and uh, she has certainly been one of the bigger players uh, on the floor here today, really all year long, as we all know, averaging the most of anybody, and she's got to be careful. Well, and, and this limits her game by having the four fouls because she's so aggressive on the boards. She'll have yeah. to take a, kind of a step back if she wants to stay in the contest. Uh, but the Anuku-Holt Anuku combo is not connecting the way it normally does. Fortunately for the Tigers, Sasha Sims has stepped up. And Anuku just checked back into the lineup there on that last whistle, so she is in there. And again, playing with those four fouls. Meanwhile, Tessa Holt with uh, 10 points has picked it up. Sasha Sims with a dozen still has the team lead for Fayette County. Kayla Lewis with a dozen for Southwest of Cabin. There's two. That's the other river sister, Kiwana. Uh, she seems to be as fast as her sister. Kawana, a 5-3 senior with five points here today. Back on the other end, Holt trying to get rid of it, does so. Anuku could not get the shot to fall, follows her own shot, and will draw the whistle. She will go to the line. Five team fouls on Fayette County, four on Southwest DeKalb. I'm, Dave, I'm impressed. I, I got to tell you. <laughs> did I, did I pass be a, the driving test? Yes, it's got to be our age difference. Uh, <laughs> that was a good job. Now, I know you had to work at it. Oh, I've got my eyeballs on. It's the, it's the age you know, difference it's here. <laughs> and the first one is there for Anuku, who has nine. See Alondra Rivers stepping back in. There you look at Anuku's numbers. Nine points, eight rebounds, and three blocks for the junior. But she averages 17.9 points yeah. a game. Second one in and out. And that's just kind of the day it's been. 
She's on her rebound average, but her scoring isn't working out. As we mentioned, a lot of folks predicted that the Lady Tigers would probably be in this position, being 31-0, and, and they certainly had some had to work for it to, throughout this postseason. But I'm not sure a lot of folks felt like Southwest DeKalb losing those three Division I players from last year, as we talked about, had the firepower to get back to this game. They were blown out twice by Maris during the regular season, but find themselves in a position right here to make it back-to-back -back titles. And of course, meanwhile, Marist was put out by this Fayette County team in right. round three, 60-44. It, it, and the game was really not even contested. It was a fair county just uh, at random. And uh, it, it was the old story of, you know, speed kills and quickness does worse. Whatever that old story is. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they, they uh, but so this is impressive, Southwest Cab, especially looking at how deep they go into their bench with these young players. So she's got confidence in her program. Rivers, Kiwana Rivers knocks down the first. Ariel Register will step out to go to Walton back in for Fayette County. Rivers with one more. And knocks it down. Seven points today for Kiwana Rivers. Her and her sister have combined for 16 on the afternoon. And boy, that one blocked out of the hand of Holt. Follow would not go, but chalk up another block there for Jamisha Blake. A nice play by Jamisha Blake. The Lady Panthers with a couple of semifinal appearances, as we mentioned, in 90 and 2008. Several quarterfinal appearances, but just two semis. And, of course, last year's state title, their first. And there's the follow right there. Laquisha Lewis in perfect position off that Rivers miss for the putback. She's got six. And it's 46-33, and the Lady Tigers want to talk about it. 6-15 left in regulation. And this Lady Panther team from Southwest DeKavnick is not letting up a bit. Well, we hope you're enjoying our live broadcast of the best in Georgia high school basketball and ask you to stay tuned after the game for your opportunity to become a member of the Georgia Public Broadcasting family. Remember, it's viewers like you that help make great local programs like this possible, and thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. Been at it for a few years now, indeed, and getting a lot of good feedback there. We certainly want to encourage people to become a member if they like some of the high school programming that they're seeing with the basketball and the football. Dave, there is nothing better than the GPB coverage of the football finals and these basketball finals. Uh, it, it's, this is a very diverse state. And when you, it's, the, the third, it's the largest state east of the Mississippi River. Folks up with you and LJ may not know the folks down at Randolph Clay. They may not know the folks at Bainbridge. So it, it, this is kind of a great unifier for the state of Georgia, the football and the basketball. It really pulls it all together. It ties a lot of communities together, absolutely. Back to action here, Dick. You know, the Lady Tigers certainly have their work cut out for them, trailing 46-33. And, you know, the clock really not much of a factor yet, but they got to start thinking about really trying to make a little bit of a run here, put something together. Well, I think they've got to start thinking about a pressure defense. First two for Dakota Walker, first two of the game. That, 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 that was a helpful play. Here they come, a little light pressure, you see. They're not going to anything, though, like a zone trap or a, the, the, the sort of traditional thing. Turn around, would not go. Lewis got a little anxious right there, a little too strong off the glass. Tessa Holt back on the other end, pulls up and knocks down. It's a two-point shot, foot on the line, but Holt with a dozen. And that might be the spark they need to get back in it. Time, time for Fed Kennedy to dance with the one who brung him. Oh, Lewis lost the handle on the ball, then gets drawled, called for the call there against Welch. That was a break for Fayette County. That's two on Kayla Lewis. 16 fouls now on the Lady Tigers and six on the Lady Panthers. As you see, Coach John Strickland in his fourth year has done a great job. And a suddenly demonstrative Coach Kathy Ritchie Walton almost to mid-court <laughs> doing jumping jacks, I guess, to tell her kids to get their arms up on defense. I was going to say, she hadn't been too animated no. that much here today, but boy, she is now. She's out there. Uh, looked like PT class in first period. <laughs> well, it's crunch time here as we hit the five-minute mark. Sasha Sims, tough shot, trying to make the pass. Looked like Blake was able to step in front of it. Jump ball, call, possession arrow, Lady Panthers. And Yuku almost committed her fifth foul on that play, but yeah, she backed that off. Close. That was close. I just see Coach Richie Walton, her seventh season, 28-4 in here today. 
Tabriana Couch, the 5th in sophomore, steps back in for the second time today. And she's stepping, she's goes stepping out. in now for defense to protect Inuka. Yeah. Inuka again with 23 points in the semifinal, so you lose a lot with her being on the bench, even though she's had just nine here today. I don't think Holton and Yuka have connected once. I don't think they've connected for the assist on the hoop once. At that time, Holton got her hands up and knocked away the back door. Pat Lewis trying to go back door. That's right. Now we know it's offense defense because uh, uh, Yuka almost came back in, but the ball stays with you. Southwest to Cap. Nice inbound play. Somebody sleeping. This couch with the rebound. Comes off the bench. Gets a big board right there. Holt goes one on one with the right hand up and in. And a good looking drive there by Tessa Holt, who's picked it up. She had four points at halftime. Now she's got 14. And all of a sudden, 46 39. Very manageable right here with the And again, and a half. she can drive on a player her own size, as she did there with a very nice move. But you can't drive against two girls who are six feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Lady Panthers certainly have a couple of those over on the bench in the ball game, there's no doubt. Tessa Holt, though, 1,400-plus career points, averaging about 12 and a half a game this year, had 15 in last year's title game. But the Southwest Cab has done a great job in cutting down the chances for Fayette to get into that out-and-out -out running game right. and for Holt to run free and look for Nyuku and Sims. Very effective, because we, we just haven't seen the two connect yet. Right. But you got to remember the Lady Panthers again, the uh, two seed out of their region. Did not win the region championship. Of course, that went to Maris. So Southwest Academy here has a two seed coming in, ranked sixth overall. You, you said you have Great to remember. <laughs> Full disclosure, I've got one at Maris. Yeah. I feel their pain. <laughs> oh, man. There you get a look at the uh, crowd here and the view from the arena at Gwinnett Center. Tessa Holt, 14 points, seven rebounds. The senior has certainly picked it up here in the second half. But this pressure defense is the key for the next 4:33. If they're going to get back in, this has got to be through the pressure on defense. And Southwest DeKalb is going to play it fairly methodically, it looks like. Oh, nicely oh, that's, done. That's pitch and catch right pitch there. Pitch and catch to the post. That was nicely done. Laquisha Lewis, eight points. She's hit her average on the day. 48-39 with four minutes and ten seconds left. And Yuku being guarded in the post by a player about three inches taller, so there's not the opening that you expect for her to get. Southwest Cab playing man-to-man -man defense now. You know, with the way both these teams run the floor, it's amazing. We have not seen that many breakaway, you know, easy layups today. No, Everything's been contested. That's right. A, a tribute to both coaches. Holt. Again, moves. two yep. taller players. Yep. Kind of altered her shot a little bit. And hit the bottom of the backboard there. And now the Lady Panthers certainly don't want to get out of the rhythm, but they can certainly take their time, that's for sure. Chastity Welch pressing up on the defense. Probably going to try to force Fayette County to come after him right here and put him at the line. It's almost that time. Maybe not quite. Uh, I'm, and I'm not sure if Fayette County's got enough fouls to give at this point. Nope, next one I think puts him in a bonus. Both teams. Oh, that shot by Lewis misses. Still another opportunity. And finally out of there with it is Anuku. Numbers against her on the other end. Good defense by Southwest to Cab to close the door. Three-point shot is there for Holt. Well, it went the other way. This time it went Anuku to Holt. 17 points for Tessa Holt, and that certainly changes the complexion of this final three minutes. Yeah, she, she bombs that three. Way behind the arc. But the key was Anuku pulled up and looked back for her. Saw her on that arc and tossed it to her. It almost always works the other way, as witness uh, Tessa Holt's average of 7.1 assists per ball game. Well, you know this Fayette County team's not going to go away. You see their fans in the house here today making a lot of noise. Well, Southwest DeKalb has certainly brought the folks up from Decatur here today. But well, it's just a six-point ball game. Well, with DeKalb County having four schools in the finals, uh, we, we really ought to have half of DeKalb County here. <laughs> Third largest county in the state, after all. I'm sure they'll continue to pack the place out as the uh, time ticks away here throughout the day. But, but now, at this point in the ball game, with just under three minutes remaining, uh, it's got to be pressure defense by Fayette County, and it's got to be the patience on offense that Southwest DeKalb showed on that last possession. 
They didn't rush to shoot. They made seven or eight passes, and, th and they looked for only a good shot, and that's a well-coached team. And here comes the full-court press by uh, the Fayette County Lady Tigers. Fayette County last year's runner-up. year before that, Sweet 16, region champs. Number one team coming into this ball game, a perfect 31-0, but that is in jeopardy here today. And patience again. They started to drive, now they pulled it out. They're going to look for only the good shot. I'm sure that's what Coach Richie Walton has told him. Looking inside, there's Lewis. Earlier in the game, she probably would have taken that shot. That's right, exactly. So now's the time to be patient, and now it's also time for Fayette County to foul. Holt working on Rivers. No foul yet, and there's two points. They pay for it, Kayla Lewis with 14. Again, we said at the outset, size versus speed. That was size. Eight-point ball game. Holt with the basketball trying to create space, unable to do so, though, against Blake. Ball loose on the floor. Picked up and a whistle. One and one now on the other end. We see Ari all register. Number 10. And I think that's her third foul. Yep. Uh, so uh, now whom do we look to start fouling uh, for Fayette County? Uh, it certainly is not going to be in Yuku, but it can be almost anyone else at this point. Two Juana. players with three and Yuku with four. Yep. Juana Rivers missed the front end. Three-point shot on the other end. Tessa Holt way off the mark. Makes two, throws an air ball. Now under two minutes to play right here. Jamisha Blake with the basketball into the hands of Rivers and back out. Alondra Rivers. And knocked away from behind there. Heads up play by Holt. Register working now on the other end. Plays up a tough shot, would not go. Followed. And Anuku at the line. And Anuku. Uh, He's a pretty good free throw shooter at 55%. Certainly not the team leader, uh, or even near the team lead, but she is a 57% free throw shooter. Timeout on the floor. Anuka will come back from the timeout to shoot the free throw. Get 132 left in regulation. Of course, last year, Southwest to Cab, 62 46 over Fayette County in this championship game, and the two. Making it back here again did not meet, of course, during the uh, regular season. And the last loss for Fayette County, of course, 31 0, was last year in the state championship game. Of course, coming up a little bit later on, Tucker and Miller Grove, the 4A boys title matchup. Again, 24 8, Tucker taking on 26 3, Miller Grove. Ought to be a good one. And, of course, 5A action a little bit later on here tonight from the Arena at Gwinnett Center. Redan and Marietta, 26 0. Red Raiders taking on Marietta 25 and 7 in the 5A Girls Championship at 7 p.m. And then at 8.45, it's Milton and Wheeler coming your way in the 5A Boys title. Again, Cobb County against North Fulton right there in a pair of 24 and 17. Should be a good one right here on GPB. Stay with us. That's going to be a fun game, that 5A Boys, because uh, on paper, uh, it belongs to Wheeler. But uh, Coach David Boyd's very young team, mostly sophomores, even a couple of freshmen. Uh, has played very well since the beginning of the season. They've grown, and they're, uh, they're a big surprise. But David Boyd, with all of his state titles at several different schools, you, you shouldn't be surprised at that. Anuku, you see her numbers there today, and now in double figures with 10. Uh, second one on the way. Knocks it down, 11 points. She will probably go out. Nope, she's not going out. We're going to stay in with a minute 32 left. Something to mention, too, Dick. There's three undefeated girls teams playing in state championships this weekend, but the only undefeated team to win a girls title out of the last 15 state championship teams was Collins Hill several years ago with Maya Moore and her <laughs> team. So, again, that streak uh, may stay alive for Collins Hill if Southwest DeKalb is able to pull out this game. And then, of course, Redan, one of those undefeated teams later on tonight. Yep. And that one inside to Lewis. And it doesn't look like the Lady Tigers are really wanting to foul that much. No, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised, but, oh. Timeout before the shot. Coach Strickland calling a 30-second timeout with 59.1 on the clock here inside the Gwinnett Arena. I, say, I, say, I said, oh, uh, because 
Sasha Sims almost traveled on that play. Coach Kathy Richie Walton thought she almost did. did, yeah. And uh, Strickland probably didn't like that three-pointer from her at that point. So he's got the timeout. Yeah, I'm surprised Fayette County isn't fouling to stop the clock. I know Southwest Academy's in a bonus. But you're down eight at this point, under a minute. you got to do it. I'm also very surprised, almost mystified, that they haven't played the high-octane pressure defense that they can full end-to-end -end, that they can do with the team speed they have. And I'm also very impressed by the poise of Southwest Academy. Off the inbound right here after the timeout. Holt again had to alter that shot once again, or maybe one of the Lady Panthers altered it forward. Jump ball, ball possession here will stay with the Lady Tigers, so they will maintain it, but only 54.3 on the clock. And trailing by eight. And they don't have to start shooting threes yet or anything like that. They've got time to get it too. Walton will draw the foul. And we'll shoot a pair. Dakota Walton only a 52% free throw shoot. Maybe the best person for Southwest to have, right. to have put on the line right there. The Walton with two points here today and misses on the first. Number 10, Ariel registered back in. She will come in for Tessa Holt, who will take a seat. And sit with 17 points to play defense. Tessa Holt has not committed a foul. Maybe she just needs a brief rest. Missed on the second one right there did Walton. So both of them, another jump ball and ball. This one goes to the Lady Panthers. So Southwest to cap possession with 46.9. I know you've worked with this officiating crew right here, and they've uh, done a good job of uh, working it both ways here today. And you can yeah. tell they've uh, they've worked under some uh, pretty good leadership nice right there, steal. I guess. Well, there's a break. There's a break for a fan county. A, a, a really quick little steal by uh, uh, Ariel, Ariel Register. Here's Ariel Register. She just jumps in out of nowhere, oh, wow. falls hard, but man managed to get the pass off and the foul at the as the gal attacked the rim. I'm surprised she popped up off the floor as quick as she did. It looked like her knees landed right on that hardwood. I, I, I think the kneecaps <laughs> landed right on the hardwood. Wow. In fact, she almost bounced. She hit it so hard. <laughs> Here's Sasha Sims, 12, 12 points, three rebounds. Quiet in the second half. Great first half for Sasha Sims. Very quiet in the second half. Yeah, and the Lady Tigers missing from the free throw line again. Have not been able to take advantage of being in the uh, stripe. But now we'll go back on the other end. And South was the Cavill shoot. Kayla Lewis with 14 here tonight will head to the line. Dave, going back to your point about the officiating crew, not just because I work with two of them during the season, but this crew is, has uh, let these kids play. There hadn't been a lot of ticky-tack fouls. We're only in the bonus here for the first time. And... Uh, it doesn't seem to be a disadvantage to either team the way that they've called this game. They're, they're doing a very professional job. I would have to agree with that. As you see, Lewis numbers 13 points, 11 rebounds here tonight. Second one on the way. There you get a look at the Lady Panthers. Still 40 seconds left, so no celebrating going on yet over there. And that oh. just would not go Holt inside to Anuku. And Again, there's I'm, I'm the, like you. I'm not sure they've still hooked up today. That's the symbol of the game. There they had the chance for Holt to slip the ball into Anuku, and uh, Anuku missed under pressure there. Uh, but this team depends on that hookup. I don't think uh, Tessa Holt's thrown a no-look pass all night because the, the defenders are, are covered very well. The, the Southwest Academy defense has got them covered up very well. And I would say the fat lady uh, is going to sing in about three seconds. Tamisha Blake with an 11-point lead. And Blake, the 5'10 senior, with six points. Make it seven. A pair of free throws. 55, 56, 44 now. 30 seconds left. Inside, and that one knocked away from Welch. Another block today for the Lady Panthers. Alondra Rivers out of there with it. Time winding down right here in Southwest DeKalb looking to make it back-to-back -back state titles. And there's the icing on the cake from Jamisha Blake. And so now, Jamika Blake and Laquisha Lewis and uh, Kiwana Rivers leave Southwest DeKalb with back-to-back state titles. Final, 59 to 46.
Southwest Academy makes it back-to-back -back state championships. Your 2009 GHSA Class 4A Girls State Champions. The Lady Panthers rank sixth coming in, rank number one going out. What a job by Coach Kathy Ritchie Walton and Southwest Decab. The celebration on at midcourt. They have come in here and upset the number one and previously unbeaten Fayette County Lady Top. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station. Welcome back, Lisa Wee, standing by courtside with Coach Kathy Ritchie Walton. Lisa. Coach Walton, back-to-back -back state titles. I could help but notice how excited you were when you jumped off that bench and they won. What's it like to win the second one? It's been a long season, and uh, my kids, they won it. I believe it. I'm so proud of them. I mean, it's a, it was a war. Fayette County, you know, one of the best teams in the state, and we had to do our best to get them, and uh, that's what the kids did. What can you say about this team and what makes this team special? Well, they were a no-name team, and they wanted to establish themselves that, you know, they can come out here and play some basketball too. So, you know, it was all about them, and they did a great job. Great win, Coach. Thank you so much. And I know there's your principal standing by too, and I know he wanted – I know you wanted to say something else about these girls, and you get a chance to say it earlier. So yes, I'm so proud of uh, Coach Walton, her coaching staff, and these fantastic young ladies that we have here at Southwest Cab. These young ladies, not only are they great athletes, but they are great scholars. These young ladies are on the road students, magnet students. We have some great students at Southwest Cab High School, and they represent the Southwest Cab High School community very well, and have made all of us very proud of them. So this is a great day for Southwest Cab High School. Premier Southwest Cab High School and the Cab County. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Dave. Back. All right, thanks, Lisa. The Lady Panthers go back to back, and that's going to wrap it up for this 4A Girls Championship. Once again, Southwest Cab, your 2009 GHSA 4A Girls Champions. For our entire GPB crew, for Dick Williams, I'm Dave Garner saying so long, everyone. 4A Boys action coming up. Stay with us. Provided in part by Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, the Georgia Student Finance Commission, Regions Bank, the Georgia Lottery, by viewers like you, and the Georgia High School Association who wish to thank the Georgia Dodge Dealers, State Farm, and Naturally Fresh for their support of GHSA athletic activities.